Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to um, uh, uh, this series. I'm going to cover how to produce a digital model uh, from your drawings um, and turn that into um, a, a physical section model, um, and, and to kind of use this model to plan it out, to, to generate the parts for and the patterns for laser cutting and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm going to work uh, primarily from the plans here, um, which I understand is something you all should have. Um, and if you have a digital model, that's fine. You can start uh, from there too. Um, but I'm going to work like this for now. Uh, and uh, in this particular video, I'm just going to cover, I'm going to start with how to produce the kind of ground plane. Um, so the first thing I need to do is uh, choose where I want to cut, uh, where I want to take that kind of slice of my model. Now, because the model is going to be six inches deep at half inch equals a foot, uh, I drew a rectangle uh, that is uh, 12 inches, or I'm sorry, 12 feet long um, to kind of represent on top of my plan, like where the slice will go, where the section will intersect. Um, so I'm going to take this um, uh, chunk of my model, basically, and I'm going to do the same. So I copy that same rectangle to the second floor plan. Um, and I'm going to use those two layers to kind of produce the model. And uh, once I've placed my section cut, so again, you want to choose a slice of your model uh, that will represent, um, you know, important spaces uh, in your project. So you know, individual living units, um, so private spaces as well as uh, important shared spaces. So it gives us a, a, a kind of sample of the variety of spaces as well as um, gives us an understanding of the variety of structural systems, uh, enclosure, aperture, etc. So we want it, we want this to be a small piece of your model that represents a kind of cross-section of the construction methods. So um, what I'm going to do now is take my plan drawings. I'm going to go select all and I'm going to uh, um, well, actually, I'm gonna. Uh, I think I can just do save as instead of exporting. So I'm, I'm just gonna take this file right now. I'm at full scale, right? So everything's in feet. Uh, I'm gonna go to save as file, save as, um, and I'll just call it something like scaled. Um, and then uh, once I've saved this separately, so I still have my plans, you know, preserved in the original file. I'm going to go ahead and change the units of my file. So I'll type in units in the command line. And under model units, I'm going to choose inches. And it'll prompt me to, uh, it'll, it'll ask whether I want to scale it by 12 or not, because I'm going from feet to inches. I'm just going to hit yes. Basically what that means is that the um, uh, model hasn't changed size. I don't know if you can see that, 144 inches, so uh, 12 feet is still 12 feet. Um, and uh, what we can do now is, is then go back and scale everything. So I'm going to select everything, use the command scale, choose a center point, I'll just use 0, 0. So first we want to go from feet to inches first. I'll do 1 divided by 12. So that should just be uh, from feet to inches. Now this uh, little box should be 12 inches. So this is more or less one inch equals a foot. And then we want to go scale again, choose a center point. And this time I'll scale it uh, by half inch equals a foot. So just one by two in the command line and press enter. Okay, and so now this rectangle should be six inches deep. Uh, there we go. So the other thing I wanna do here is I want to make sure that the length of my uh, slice of my model um, is going to work as well. So I select both my rectangles, go to scale 1D, snap to one end, and then the other. Um, and then I want to make sure that I'm no, uh, no greater than 32 inches because that's the size of the laser cutter bed and I want to make it easy on myself when I'm producing the parts. But I should also point out that you are welcome to uh, do a slice of your site that's less than the full width, you know, from property line to property line. 
uh, if it you know if it if you think it shows enough of your project or like the format of your site isn't going to fit within that boundary, um, you're welcome to use something that's um, a little smaller. So um, uh, for this, I'm just going to use scale one D and set it set them both to 32. Okay, so we know that'll fit in the laser bed. That's the size of our bed and so on. Okay, that's good. All right, and uh, then what I'm going to do is select everything again and make a copy. So I'm just use the command copy and just move it straight over to the right. Um, and then in here, so I, I preserve my kind of plans uh, so that I have you know, information about the context if I need it. Uh, and then I'm going to go in here and just get rid of everything that I don't uh, need for my model. So I'm just going to select my rectangle, use the command trim, um, and get rid of all the lines that uh, aren't included in that slice. I'll do the same up here. Um, you may also want to turn off certain layers, you know, for things that you don't necessarily need to show. Okay, that looks pretty good. For example, let me get rid of the furniture. Okay. Also get rid of the context. So we just want the part of the plan that's like inside of our boundary here. Okay. I gotta do this one still. Watch out for like group things. I'm done with that I'll kind of bring them back together so I can clearly see like which part of which is going to hit the uh, um, like how they're going to stack up in uh, in floors I'll get rid of the furniture okay and I can also get rid of the vegetation don't need that and then I'm going to start with my ground floor. So like I said, this this video is just going to cover how to um, kind of figure out the ground plane and stuff like that. Um, so what I want to do first, I should copy this, is make a new layer. I'm going to call it 3D uh, for kind of each, each piece of the model that I'm going to make um, um, in my physical model, each different layer. Um, and so this project has like a series of uh, CMU walls um, that form the kind of base of the first floor, um, as well as um, you know a kind of light wood framing construction up above that sits on top of the kind of heavy masonry base. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, make some new outlines. I want to make an outline that represents the paving. Uh, so I'm going to use the command polyline. And I'm going to go in here and trace where the paving would go. Just make a full outline. There we go. And then I'll make a new layer. I'll call that paving. And then from that line, so let me set that as current. From that line, I'll make a surface. So under the little surface button, Choose planar surface. You can also type in planar surf in the command line. And then I'll delete the outline. Um, I'm also going to uh, extrude the walls. So yeah, to, if you're in like top view or something like that, what you want to do to orbit is hold control shift on the keyboard, right click and drag uh, to kind of move into 3D. Um, so I'm also going to make some outlines 
uh, for my walls, my CMU walls, um, which actually we could just make a make a box. So I'll make a new layer again, switch to that layer. Okay. And then this wall, uh, I believe this wall is actually a bit taller, it's 18 feet, uh, which is um, 9 inches. Um, this wall here, so you'll notice I'm drawing through the parts of the walls, this one's 10 feet, so 5 inches. I'm um, drawing through the parts of the walls where the windows are cut out. What we want to do is kind of model this as like one element and then we'll come back later um, and like subtract out the openings for windows and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm going to model another one here. And again, I'm just keeping them separate uh, because when we actually go to like laser cut this thing, um, you know, these are going to be separate, fabricated as separate surfaces. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So there's our, um, our basic CMU walls. Um, and this is like, you know, the enclosed space, the paved space, and then just like kind of groundscape. Um, now, what we also want to do here, uh, before we start to model the ground, is um, begin to extend the, our like walls into the, um, into the surface of the ground. Um, so that we can represent like footers, structure, and things like that. I'm gonna make these different colors, okay. So basically what I wanna do is extend all of my CMU walls, uh, like one course into, like downward into the ground, basically. So what I'll do is I'll turn off my line work, turn off my paving layer, and then in order to extend these walls, I mean, I could use scale 1D, I can also hold control shift on the keyboard, right click and drag to like um, select all the way around the bottom edges of my wall. So I'm, I'm like selecting the edges of the surfaces. Then I'll use the command move, the option for vertical, uh, and I want to move it down by one course, which is eight, uh, you know, eight inches at full scale. Uh, four inches at half scale, which is, um, let's see, what's eight? Uh, right divided by. Uh, oops, I did that wrong. Uh, eight divided by 12, divided by two. <clears throat> Okay, so that's 0 0.33, whatever, 3, 3 inches. So we'll move, vertical, and we'll go minus 0.333. Okay, so now we've moved it down uh, below grade by, you know, a third of an inch, um, or one CMU course. Um, <clears throat> so now let me turn my lines back on. Uh, what I would also do is, is model the footings. Um, now, you know, in reality, each of these walls would have like a footing that uh, extends along its length underground, uh, because in this case, uh, you know, our ground, our ground, or our base of our model um, is only going to reveal what's happening in the footings for the walls. Um, you know, where they intersect with the section cut. Um, we're just going to model footings for these walls that are um, that are hitting that section cut. So. Um, what I'll do for that is I'll use the command dupe border. I'm sorry, not dupe border, dupe edge. That allows me to select the edges of a surface or a poly surface and turn them into lines or curves. So then I press enter. So now I have that, that edge as a curve. I'll type in join. Um, and then I'll use scale 1D. Let's assume that the width of our footer is like about two feet. So if we scale out from the center to 0.5 of an inch, oops, I meant to do scale 1D, scale 1D. So from the center to the edge, set that to 0.5. That's our footer. I'll do the same for this poly surface. Uh, 
line scale one D half an inch. So now I'm going to take both of those lines and put them on a new layer. I'll call this my footings. Set that to current. Um, all right, and use the command extrude curve. Oops. And I'll go down, uh, let's say, six inches, which would be a quarter of an inch. And delete the outlines. All right, so that's the part of the footing that will intersect with the base. <clears throat> and then the other thing that I want to model here is going to be the, um, the slab. So uh, uh, we're going to model like a surface for this uh, slab here. Uh, that forms the kind of interior volume, or that is the you know the ground of the interior volume. Um, and we want to uh, when we model that, we want to again give it um, a greater thickness uh, where it, where it uh, hits a wall. So basically, we're going to model it in such a way that it's sitting on the slab, um, and where it has greater thickness where there's a where the enclosure is. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually draw the profile of my slab. Uh, along the section plane. So I'll change my view to front, just type in front view, or if it's not front, type in left or right view. Um, actually, I'm going to go the other way. Set view, world, back. There we go. Then I'll use the command polyline. And again, make a new layer and set it to current. Okay. So we're going to have our uh, slab go all the way down to the footer below the CMU wall. Uh, then we'll have it come out about six inches. So again, 0.25. And then we'll have it come up. Uh, well, actually, let's do it this way. We'll draw a new line that defines the top of our slab. And then I'll offset that line. Uh, set this option cap to none if it's not already. And for the distance, I'm going to go like three inches thickness, which would be an eighth of an inch, 0.125. Okay. It looks like I didn't actually set this to current. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. And uh, then I will also actually, I'm going to copy this, oops, to the other side. I'll just use mirror. Um, actually, oops, that should be right at the end. And then I'll join all those outlines together. Oops. Oh, did I delete that? Oh, there we go. All right. So that's basically the profile of my slab. We have a thinner, you know, thinner part in the middle, and then thickness where it meets the wall or where there's a um, enclosure. So again, normally you would have that uh, thicker edge wrap all the way around uh, where it meets the walls, but because we only see it where it intersects the section cut, we're just going to do a straight extrusion like this. So I'll do extrude curve and bring it all the way back to that interior wall and then delete the outline. So I'm going to call this my slab. Change that color as well. Okay. Okay. And then I think we're pretty much ready to model the ground plane. So uh, as we mentioned before, the ground plane is going to be um, like a thick cardboard base. So I'm going to select this exterior uh, or this outside um, uh, rectangle. Extrude curve. And so that, uh, I'll make a new layer again, set it to current. So that base wants to be six inches deep. So I'm going to type six in and press enter. Um, and I'm just starting from like where zero is, from where the ground is or where the top is. Um, so I'm just going to model that right at where my rectangle is. Um, <clears throat> and then basically use the stuff that I've modeled so far to subtract from it. And um, let me 
also extrude my um, uh, my paving. So I'll go extrude surf, um, and then I'm going to go down also three inches or eighth of an inch. Okay, and then I also want to remove some material over here because this is like the curb, right? So this is where I would have. Um, Uh, like a drop off in the ground plane. So I'll scale, I'll just draw a box, scale 1D, and I'll set this down to quarter inch. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off my 2D lines again. I'm going to select all these lines and make a copy of them. So I'll just type in copy, and then I'm just going to hit this option in place. So now everything here is duplicated. Everything that we want to subtract from the ground plane has been duplicated. What I can do is just type in hide. So you know one of those duplicates is now hiding because uh, we want to preserve it you know, for making the model. And then I'm going to Boolean difference the rest of these objects away from the, from the ground plane. So I'll type in Boolean difference. And I'll just go one thing at a time. You can do those together. There we go. Okay. And so that is the um, shape. It may look a little complicated, uh, but that's basically the shape that we want our, um, our kind of base to have. So now I'll type in show to bring back everything else. Um, and, but we're not done with this. So what we got to do now is turn it into like um, the right uh, layers um, for producing a, um, a base width. Um, so we have this shape. Uh, I'm going to set that as my current. I'll call this ground. And I'm going to turn off all the other layers. So I'm just looking at that one layer. And then uh, what, I, what, I, what we want to do is like make this uh, into stacked cardboard, you know, like vertically stacked layers of cardboard. Um, and the cardboard we're using is 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 going to be three sixteenths of an inch. Um, it could be you know a different thickness, but that's what we recommend you use. Um, so I'm going to uh, uh, use the command contour. What this contour command does is it makes a whole like series of sections through a piece of geometry, um, and uh, like allows us to do that in any direction and with any spacing. So what it'll ask first for is the contour base point. So we're going to click one of these corners. Then it'll ask for a direction. So we're going to draw out. We want to draw a direction perpendicular to those sections. So the sections are going to go, you know, like this, stacked vertically. So I'm going to draw out along the length of it. That's the direction perpendicular to the cuts. And then it's going to ask me for a distance between them. So I'll use 3 16 or whatever the thickness of your material is. And it will automatically, you know, produce these sections. Um, now I think they'll be joined by default. Okay, yeah, good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the original volume there. Um, and I'm also going to delete the one right at the very end. So, um, okay, let's do two things here. So if I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to model these as solid just to, just as a reference in my physical or my digital model. So I'm going to call this uh, new layer my, or this current layer my ground contours, ground extrusion. Let's make a new layer, and then I'll use the command extrude surface. Oops, I'm sorry, extrude curve, obviously, um, and I'll extrude them. So make sure the option solid is set to yes. And then I'll extrude them 3 16 7 inch. Okay. So now we have the outline still, which is actually really all we need for the um, you know for the physical model. 
Uh, but we also have this kind of representation of what that stacked cardboard base would be. Um, and I believe, yeah, there should be 32 at 3 sixteenths of an inch. Um, so if we turn off this layer, so this is basically what, you know, what we need to cut in order to form the base. Uh, so we need to lay these out so that we can laser cut them. <coughs> so I'm going to show you a quick uh, trick for doing that that works for, you know, contoured um, objects. Uh, I'm going to use the command shear. So first I'm going to change back into top view. Select all those outlines, so not the poly surfaces, but the outlines. Use the command shear. So uh, it's going to ask me for an origin point. I'll choose one of the outermost corners of that so, uh, like collection of lines. And I'll draw a line straight up perpendicular to my contours. And then I'll move my uh, point out all the way until they're not overlapping each other. Oops, didn't quite get it. Do one more round. Oops. There we go. And now if I go into front view, as you can see, um, they've already kind of been laid out. They're in order. Um, and they're, uh, you know, like already kind of separated from each other. So we don't have to take each individual one and kind of lay it out. Um, which would be arduous. So what I'll do now is I'll zoom out and I'm going to do uh, make 2D. So like, you know, these are uh, still like oriented in the, in the Z plane or in the Z, uh, along the Z axis. So if I go to front view and type in make 2D with those lines selected, click OK. Then I'll go back to top view. So now they're, you know, they're in top view, which means I can print them. Uh, and they've been flattened, you know, like on the XY plane. Like these are still stepping up based on how they were laid out. Um, so then I could go in and uh, begin to uh, lay them out, you know, on individual sheets for our laser cutting. Um, so um, that will help me keep my um, my kind of laser cut pattern separate and clean from my 3D model. Um, so that's going to conclude this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'll start to cover um, uh, how to um, uh, produce the rest of the model.